Hello, uh, welcome back under the dome. Welcome back to Encase and playing hardball. So this is, we are going to listen to the sermon now. After we became hog mechanics, we took apart the, the second one. Um, where is it? We parked it like back there. Took out the battery. However, f unfortunately, I mean, there was here this uh, pile of documents or whatever, and that was actually not so... Yeah. Uh, Pause and listen super productive and for us, but well, at least we got this big car battery out of the yeah. hog. Was so, money? so reverence. What people start gathering around the oh. makeshift stage. Judging by their clothes, some of them came from the city, but most are locals. A handful brought their own glasses, but the majority has none. Apparently, they'll be hearing the sermon for the first time. Uh -huh. Santiago is contentedly pacing the length of the stage, wearing his usual grin. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. I do ask that you please forgive the delay. Once my assistants arrive with the equipment for any of you who come without, we shall begin. Ah, here they are. Lights shimmer behind the sewage gate. Some people with torches appear to drag a large wooden box up on the stage. Someone pries open the lid. I, I kind of have a bad feeling about this whole thing. Teleglasses are laid in rows in the box. The assistants begin to pass them out to the crowd. Oh, Tech 60. Ah, that's very sad. Yeah, we are, we are not getting Tech 60. We only have 19 points and I think we have like 30 points in tech, right? I would like to try this out though, but well, so let's, uh, let's wait for Santiago to speak. You're standing in the crowd waiting for the sermon to start. Nothing's happened yet. The world around you is unchanged, except for the slightly purple tint. You look around. Everyone is hastily donning their teleglasses. Uh -huh. The spotlights around the stage go dark, and the rippling screens turn off one by one. Vague, bright flashes fly past you in the gathering purple dusk, and you hear the sounds of the seashore. Uh huh. A virtual reality waves are rolling in over a strip of pebbles onto fine white sand looking more closely you see the water is sparkling light blue rose and white the waves are filled with light although it doesn't resemble sunlight casting your head back you look up at a peacefully blazing blue disc high in the sky Someone takes you by the hand. A pretty woman is smiling kindly at you. Her face a shimmering white. I am Sister Maria. Come with me. Mm-hmm. That's a pretty nice picture here. You walk along the shore together. The sea washing up at your feet recalls memories. Though it's hard to say whether they represent things that actually happened. Did you go looking for little crabs? Did you build a castle from a handful of wet sand that formed walls and towers by itself? The sunglasses you just picked up from the surf, did you ever really find them on a beach? Maria gives your fingers a playful squeeze. We could stay here forever. It doesn't matter where you were before. Here, you can build and live the life you want. Oh, that's nice. We are holding hands, huh? just like that. Um, well, we need. We still need to eat, drink, and return to reality from time to time, like when we have these glasses on. The church gathers people to find solutions together. Stay with us, and you'll see how much we've achieved. But you'll have to come to the second sermon for that. The woman is holding you by the shoulders. The sand on her hands 
sparkles with minuscule neon lights. This is so suspicious. I guess it's addictive or something. Well, Maria, what is the catch? The woman stops to kick up sand with her bare foot. Must there be a catch? The world we're sharing right now is unreal. But what is real nowadays? Apart from a civilization dying in the desert, this place, it's alive and more real than you think. Yeah, still a bad feeling here. But well, we wonder when the sermon will actually begin. Her smile seems to glow with a gentle light. It has already begun. A sermon need not be only about words. Showing is much more important than telling. Hmm. Apparently we have nothing else to say, so let's walk beside her in silence. That can also be romantic. The soft roll of the waves brings peace. You walk contentedly alongside Maria. The sky overhead reminds you of a blue rose abyss. Massive glowing streams rise from the gleaming horizon like flames in slow motion. That is actually very interesting. I wonder what that is, a blue disc. And we know that we, we saw like the sea, the sea phenomenon. We saw this blue column going into the sky, right? Maybe there is a connection there. Your companion slows down a bit. We're almost there. You'll see something soon. She takes a step into the ocean, dragging you after her. Uh, into the ocean, well... The water splashes with each step, but doesn't slow you down at all. The dark blue dome above grows ever larger and lighter, as if you were strolling right into the heavens. Your feet never leaving the sea. Hmm. This is a good point to tell that we are actually afraid underwater, but yeah. Let's let's try you know not to chicken out here and try to impress the lady. When the opening above your head has vanished completely, you see an enormous arch lost in the boundless sky. A distant land dotted with seas roofs this world. The lights of settlements on this sky continent shimmer through gleaming clouds. Hmm. The distant land dotted with seas. This look it's it's like a ring, huh? <clears throat> a habitational ring there where the gravity keeps the stuff on the inside. Possibly. Maria turns to you. We'll stop here. That faraway world can be yours. The church is willing to give it to each of us. All we need to do is take a step forward. I will be waiting here for your return. Ah, uh, okay, Maria. Before you have a chance to respond, the space around you begins to fall apart. Everything decays into a grid of glowing lines which rapidly blink off one by one. Hmm. You rip the glasses off your head. Waters sloshing in your boots and the ground around your feet is wet. A novitiate standing by the stage is holding a fire hose. He closes the nozzle and drags it away. A cheap trick. I wonder if we can keep the glasses. Then the lanterns all come on again, illuminating the stage where Santiago's standing, arms thrown up. Thank you for coming, everyone. Maria and I will be waiting for you at our next sermon. Hmm. Okay. Pause well, and listen and think. I'd really like to get the desert. tech up. The tech. Tech 60. And, well, we do have... I think we do have... Uh, Hand to hand. Report on stolen da. Ah, yeah. Oh, uh, we we actually we could do it. I think. So let us actually try this. Was it money? Let's try this. <clears throat> I'm just reloading now. 
Um, and I really want to see this. Pause and listen there you go. And I really want to see this. What so you here uh, we business? are increasing our tag to 40. And then we are using this here because we have also five. Um, I wonder what the difference is, but let's consume one. Ah, oh, yeah, there you go. So this is now for one hour. Was it money? And now we have Adventure? tech 60. So one thing every one of us has in mind. Let's start with the sermon. I'm just clicking through now. Aha, so tech glasses are laid in rows and box in the box. Let's see if we can figure out how the glasses work. You take the glasses off and turn them over in your hands. Super Color Navigator manufactured the base. However, this unit's assembly and parts are both of lower quality. This example was made here, under the dome. Other differences are more noticeable. The main lenses are purple, with additional thinner lenses bearing a luminous projection net hidden beneath. A small radio aerial is mounted on the side of the device. There are silicon capped speakers on the inside near the user's temples. These teleglasses are also significantly heavier than similar silver wing devices. So a crude piece of tech that they, you know, fumbled together. Santiago claps his hands. Ah, this will be a wonderful night. Dear guests, please take a couple of steps back from the stage yeah. and put on your glasses. So let's put them you on. Place the device on your head. Nothing's happened yet. The world around you is unchanged, except for the slightly purple tint. You look around. Everyone is hastily donning their teleglasses. Hmm. The spot right. around the stage go dark. Okay, then. Waves are so you walk along I'm just the flicking through. Together. The sea washed the physical needs what is the catch to kick up sand with a first when will the sermon begin and then we walk in silence and then we look at Maria. this phenomenon you you the blue disc the and the possibly a space station or something okay pause and listen did we actually get something for this what brought you here yes we got 40 desert. experience okay well <clears throat> so Goodwill. I mean, One having the tech stuff is actually, common. well, we do have enough of the, uh, oh, sorry, we need to go away. I don't want the guy to talk in the background all the time. So we, uh, we could, we could push our tech, uh, for quite a while longer. Um, with this here. So I think we could probably keep it at 40. Uh. And then we've got nine more points to spend on other stuff. Yeah. So I guess we leave it at that. And then we are 7,000, roughly 7,000 experience points away from the next level. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So I say we keep it like this. Yeah. And then this way, if we encounter further level two tech things, um, we can just read another book. Overclocking, energy damage plus 10%, more spikes, melee weapons 50, and the tool juggler. Oh, but for that we need deftness 8. Okay. But uh, uh, oh, and we could we could do some gunsmithing now. Do we have actually? Do we have a workbench somewhere? I think there wasn't one, right? Unfortunately. Yeah, I think did they have maybe one in here? Gunsmith workbench. Ah, over there. Yeah, I saw. I I knew that I saw something. So let's have a look. Maybe we can actually do something. So. Attila, ah oh, yeah, that's this thing here. Okay. Oh, it's just cartridges. Okay, well, now we leave those alone. 
We don't really know what we over, oh, but well, we could make some of these. We don't have so much fuel left now that we are at it, actually. So canister, blank soap and reagent box. Canister, blank soap and reagent box. Let's do it. Let's do it once. Canister, soap and reagent box. Yeah, there's one canister let's have one the soap or was it two i'm not sure let's take two and the reagent box so that was here we only have two of those so but the thing is we only have yeah two more fuel so we don't have so much uh, shots for the flamethrower and the flamethrower was actually not so bad against uh, many cockroaches, so... We do need... We do need another uh, tool... Well, it's gunsmithing. Hmm. So here. So let's make one. Do we actually get something? Yeah, we gain, oh yeah, we gain 40 experience for that too, okay. <clears throat> That's good to know. So if we craft something, we gain experience. That's a good thing, okay. Oh, and we made a lot of uh, shots with this. That's actually, That's actually pretty good, okay. So was there, was there another workbench somewhere? I don't think so, right? No. So then the only thing that we could do is actually uh, go down there and uh, participate uh, in the fighting. Brothers and sisters, pause and listen. Yeah. What brought so I think there was nothing here, right? And uh, yeah, but it's fun. So these guys, this church, they apparently they uh, <laughs> they. They rigged uh, some stuff together. So let's go in here. They rigged some stuff together with primitive uh, tech. Yeah, and uh, that stuff they are selling. They are selling it out uh, as, you know, as a religion or something. So there's nothing here, right? We only had the chemistry workbench. And the chemistry workbench is uh, only working with tech, I believe, right? Yeah, it's pharmacology. That's uh, med aid con and contraptions, though. Yeah. Oh, gunsmithing. Yeah, well, come on, guys. We are we are actually we are making. Let's make let's make one. Um, let's make one uh, grenade, like one homemade grenade. So that's nails, nails, bolts, tin cans, and black powder. And we could make one Molotov cocktail as well, right? Energy resistance causes burning. Finland's most famous drink keeps your enemies warm in winter or every other season for that matter. Yeah. Let's just make it now that we have uh, gunsmithing at 60. And this here. Frag grenade. Oh, the spare parts. Oh no. I think we can rather use those. So tin can nails, bolts. And this here we already have. Oh, let's, let's actually, now that we are here, let's make uh, one Molotov cocktail. Craft one. Gives us seven experience, okay. Molotov cocktail. So let's get some nails and black powder and the tin. There.
By the way, that's nice that they have these insects here by the by the uh, by the light. That looks pretty nice. So, <coughs> the, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? So let's have twenty. Some more bolts. Needed the nails. There are the nails. Black powder nails and the tin, right? So where's the tin? Tin, show yourself there. Or maybe we can actually make two of those. Black powder. Another 20. More nails. Might come in handy. So, that should be it. Unless my brain didn't work well enough. There you go. These teleglasses, they are everything we ever expected. We are running like a pro, right? So, let's do it. I was actually thinking, though, that there might be another form of workbench, but yeah, gunsmithing, chemistry. So here we go, a homemade grenade. It's 10 black powder, craft one. We get seven experience for that. <coughs> so how much how much does that do actually? The homemade grenade laceration for three turns, mechanical damage ten to twenty, In case of damage, cryogenic resistance. So I mean, it is not so bad to use this one, and then Katarzyna with her cryo laser can actually do some good work going. So. Now that we are here and we have the the tech up, let's actually let's make one more. Let's make three of them. So, so that way we have. There you go. That way we have some options, some technical options. I think that was good. So, I think that's good. And by the way, Katarzyna never put the backpack on, right? Is by the way, is the backpack better? It look it looks kind of bigger. No, it's the same one. So Katarzyna, you can also take a backpack. And, uh, yeah. Well, the, the weapon repair kit, though. I didn't see the weapon repair kit. So there's none here. But I believe uh, in the tutorial area, like in the beginning, there was an option somewhere. I'm not entirely sure what I saw, but I think we, we saw an option to make it out of this gun brush stuff and so on and so on. Um, My dearly beloved people. And uh, yeah, it's a bit sad that we don't have the option here now. Gunsmithing. Let's have a look again. Would be logical, actually, to have the gunsmith, the gunsmithing, but we just don't have it here. No, it's just the cartridges. Yeah. Hmm. It's a bit sad. Otherwise, I would really like to upgrade our stuff. So, crumb. The shotgun is there. Okay, so you can do buckshot, point blank shot, and the bean bag shot. That actually, the bean bag shouldn't use up a normal shot, right? Like a normal cartridge, but yeah. Okay then, so we go back here to our little stash. We put back some stuff. But I think that was actually nice, like doing some crafting. Uh, uh, 
and to get some stuff going. And now it's actually time to also put away some stuff. I really don't want to eat this stuff that gives us heartburn. So the soap can go back. The nails can go back. This here can go back. And then I think we are good. How, how heavy is this? 500, yeah. 500 grams per piece. The earth can go back. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. <coughs> the black powder can go back. We use up some bolts. But I think 14. Yeah, it's fine. Back or maybe... There, 15 is a better number, uh, right? Kind of. So... And do we actually have the coffee here? Yeah? Let's put one there. And that's salt. Okay, so I think then we are done there. Um, we're just ca carrying along some stuff. Yeah, and I think it's, uh, it's a good thing. Oh yeah, the empty beer bottles. Let's have one just in case we need it for something. Oh yeah, and all the heavy fuel. So... Like this. Ah. Yeah, nine. And then we've got 11 shots basically with us. That's fine. Or maybe one more, 12. Because we are going on an expedition now. That's the thing, right? So like this. Now it's time for an expedition. So quick saving. And really, I, I still hope that we find some form of no there's a chemistry workbench in here and also relax. just the kitchen back later. I'll be here. the berry yeah th no thanks oh yeah by the way sorry we wanted to go in here right so I'm also still sad that if we diffuse the traps we are not getting them it's very sad so let's get down there maybe there's we can't leave the location while your companions are lagging behind it. Then come over, guys. So, sure, you could beat him in half a minute flat, but who wants that? The audience came to see a show, not a massacre. Pretend to be impressed by his fighting spirit. Let a couple of punches connect and slide, of course. Then you can put him on the ground. What? Yes, of course he knows. Guess who his agent's betting on. Well. Oh, there's a servo in just shell. a few minutes, the main event. Uh, oh, maybe is there something here? Pit fighter? No, okay. Shower stall, broken toilet? No, okay, no, okay, no, nothing there. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we could try it out, right? But I, I really think that we are very bad at. Uh, at close combat, simply because we have we we don't have any weapon skill here. Hand to hand is twelve, so it's really useless. We don't need to do it. I don't like it here. Hey, psst. let's go. Let's leave, eh? Oh, they never listen to me. Yeah, Katarzyna, let's just check this place out. Gentlemen, welcome to today's show. Oh, in just a few minutes, they don't the need that anymore, right? In this very pit, the big deal, the brouhaha, an old fashioned showdown. It's novice against novice. Oh, Discord and to end brass knuckles upon coming up with an idea to equip an ordinary brass knuckle with a capacious battery and a contact discharger seaman inc created a monster according to one senior blackwing officer however the order to supply the discord electric knuckles another dome has been signed immediately after the device showcase okay that's actually interesting one of them is already familiar to you 
I wonder if that is actually a hint. So let's, let's check the other stuff out. Okay, Wait a little more and you will find out. Yeah, we're just checking this one. Just a moment before we are talking with people. This the Vega drinking machine. Can we actually do something with it? No. Here okay, well we could. Actually no one is looking. But let's do that later. There's this. There's a metal locker. Oh, the high capacity power cell. Thomas O'Connor. Trash bin. Some crap. No Spessin. Broken toilet. Piece of cloth. That has clogged the toilet. I wonder who's Bella's responsible for that. Checks her communicator every minute or so. I don't want to rush you, honestly, but uh, can we leave for Magellan already? You can't imagine how much I miss having a hot shower. <laughs> ah well, yeah, just just use this shower then. Come on, let's hop onto the shower all together. Yeah, there, right? I'm not sure why we are relieved. Like you shouldn't do that in the shower, really, children. You shouldn't do that. You shouldn't relieve yourself inside of the shower. So, let's talk with this guy. Hello, Thomas. What do you need? The thug, the thug looks at us suspiciously. You can't come in here. Well, we wanted to trade with you, of course, right? Oh, and we see you are you are trading. You are trading stuff, right? How about a pipe wrench for you? Because we don't need that. We have several of those. Hmm. Well, if you could, could just give us the money then. Come on, give us the money. There, like this. Accept. I hope we won't see you. Thank again. you for the business, my friend. So then. Oh, yeah, and there's another one. Andy. Oh, hello there. Oh, it's a lady. The smell of booze wafting off this woman could just about knock a man off his feet. The damsel takes a gulp from a bottle wrapped in a bag and throws us a sloppy wink. Come on, just don't just stand there. Gonna be slashy. Come see. She offers a broad, rough hand marked up with blurry bandit tattoos. And he was quest, mother, father. My daddy wanted a son, that bastard, but I reckon life's alright like this too. Andy produces a wry smirk and raises the strong smelling bottle near our face. So, did you take it? Do you take it? Um uh, well Yeah, well, why not, right? I mean we wanted to fight. Let's grab the bottle by the neck and take a long pull. Yeah, there you go, Prairie Wolf. Fuck me. Respect. Yeah, that's right. Nose it a bit before you drink. Hey, hey, leave something for me. These gladiator games can get boring real fast without booze. And he takes her bottle back and holds it close to like her one true love. Okay, well, do you barter anything? Oh, you have got a sheaf. And you've got nails. Well. See ya. So what happened there? We are wasted. Perception, brain, deafness. Oh yeah, that's not good. Okay. Fortunately, we are living by the philosophy of saving early and saving often, right? So... Thomas, well, we had what? a talk with you, right? Again. And you have that. Get that's out. good. Let's go down here. Well, so, so Andy... And these guys, the Gale and Summers, so they are just watching there, okay. Oh yeah. So Andy. Greetings. And what if uh what if we take a tentative sip? 
Our cautious sipping makes the orange wins. Why well, you acting like some silver, Grand Noir? Go on, drink to your heart's content. Now we get prepared and then blood will spill. Bye bye. What's this? We are still wasted, even with the little sip. Yeah. Yeah, come on. But we're not going to lecture her because we are actually fun, right? So. And uh, so let's rather talk with the others. Gail Summers. I'm all ears. The sloppy long haired person of indeterminate age and gender is muttering something to themselves. When we get closer, it becomes clear the subject is betting. So. 1.6 on victory, 2.8 on losing together. That's well. Oh, come on, think. He trails off as he sees us, then offers his hand, having first wiped it on his grunge colored overall. Well, hello, you. I'm Gail Summers. Are you also interested in gambling then? Hmm. Well, firstly, let's see what you have to offer. Barter wise, nothing. Okay, well, of course we would, we uh, we would bet. Ah, oh, that's nice. That's it, yeah. Gail's voice is neither high nor deep, but blandly indistinguished. One might think an eraser pass over this man at some point, leaving him without any distinctive features. Today's a winner. I'll win for sure. If, on, if I only had another five CBs to close the line, my bets would be fully abgemacht, as the man says. I win this. Get rich. Pay down my debts. Gail, I think you do, if you have debts, then you certainly have a problem, right? He's muttering to himself again, but at the same time occasionally glancing our way. Yeah. Compulsive gambling ruins lives, right? And he's a gambling addict. Yeah, I mean, we can, maybe we should give him five. It's not so much, right? Here. How kind of you? I'm so grateful. When I win, I'll pay back this little loan twice over. Gail seems very confident about this, at least right now. Yeah. I'm not sure if we ever see that, but now now the, we have an indebtor, at least, right? So someone is indebted to us. So We approach a skinny, long-haired guy in a shabby silver wing suit jacket. He grabs our hands in his as if continuing a dialogue between old friends. Good, good. Afternoon or evening. Oh, it doesn't matter. I'm on a streak here. No time to look at my watch. The young man's copper plate badge bears the inscription Mikhail Belyaev, marketing specialist. Why would anyone ever need a marketing specialist under the dome now? Mikhail notices us looking at him and assumes a dignified air. Qualification is no slipper. It's not going to escape from your foot. I follow both favorites and underdogs closely. My bets are hedged and I always turn a profit. Uh huh. Firstly, let's check what you bet. Uh, what you barter? Okay, only one screw. And how are you doing it? The scrawny man hoists one thin eyebrow. <coughs> Didn't you hear me? I go great guns. It's quite simple. I basically follow the martingale, though never forgetting the fork. The coefficient should never be less than 2.5. That's my secret. Hmm. I wonder if I should start charging for detailed analysis. analysis. He laughs in a high-pitched, unpleasant manner, fists clenched by his sides. For someone with a winning strategy, his suit looks rather shabby and not particularly clean. Yeah. How, how would he express, uh, explain the contradiction between the Martingale and Bernoulli St. Petersburg paradox, huh? How, how about that? What a uh, well... Mikhail is apparently unfamiliar both with game theory and the expected utility function. Hmm... Well, but we know, we know about that, right? In depth, we know. Hey, you know what? Go be cute someplace else. I've got to think over my next bet. The silver purses his lips and turns away. Hmm. Well, what precise profit numbers are you talking about? Mikhail's gaze goes dull as his smile goes wry. I am not going to divulge my private information. Anyway, the new committee statute concerning individual enterprise and commercially sensitive information. Thus the man begins spouting a geyser of clever words and sophisticated terms once again, hands outspread. Plainly, no clear answer will be forthcoming. That kind of guy, huh? Well, let's express our admiration for his bold and optimistic attitude. 
This guy looks extremely pleased with himself. There, 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 there you are. Well, no charge for your first time. Call it a free promo. Well then. See ya. So, <clears throat> so we don't want to get wasted. Let's have a talk with Andy again. Hiya. Uh, so here, there. No, we are refusing politely. So, it's more for me, but here for you. But here, you me, it's better watch and bloodshed if you're hammered. Hypes you up. And he winks at us again and laughs deeply. Yeah. Bye bye. No. So, because. We want to fight ourselves, right? Especially now that we have this thing here. There, we can use it. I think. End to end brass knuckles, right? That should that should do something nice, right? So this uh, the office cabinet. Oh, no one is looking, right? There, okay. There's tape recorder. Oh, come on! Can you get out of the way? I don't want to rush you, honestly, but uh, can we leave for Magellan already? You can't imagine how much I miss having a hot shower. <laughs> well, we we just had the shower over there. You know, do you remember? The worn-out tape crackles on the background of the welcoming speech. Okay, well, then we do have something there. Something here. Oh yeah, weapon parts. That's good. Oh, and some spare parts. Those we need for the frag grenade, actually. Okay. So, Ling Wang. I don't like you. Uh, what? How could you? How could you not? What's not to like? A strong woman with a severe face towers in front of us. You gotta speak to Patsy about pit business. I'm just a guard. Well, what is the pit? She takes a step back in surprise. Oh, are you from another planet or something? Idiots come to watch other idiots die. That's the story of the pit. The end. She spits. And why do you keep working here if you hate it so much? She shrugs. I like money and Patsy is actually an alright guy. He makes good money and pays the guards well. If people want to volunteer their combons to see blood spill, so, it, so be it. It's the law of the market and that means it's fair. Not such a bad situation by the dome standards. I'm no moralist, but the simple truth is we've got a snow cone's chance in hell of ever seeing citizenship and that's because of things like the pit. As long as we've got entertainment like that, the city will see us as barbarians. Anyway, go talk to Patsy. I'm not paid to talk. She turns away. Well, and do you trade anything? Oh yeah, you do have something. And are gone. Shotgun shells. So if you have shotgun shells, you probably have a shotgun, huh? Yeah. Yes. So, you put get that out. There. Yeah. We'll find out. So, and now the big moment comes. So this guy here, Patsy, is the one to talk to if we want to fight, right? So here, Patsy. Greetings. We see a tall, thin man with fluffy white sideburns, which looked rather odd on his windburn face. A bit like Isaac Asimov, huh? He's wearing a silver suit jacket with a makeshift badge reading Patsy Logan, Fight Arranger. Or I should rather say the late Isaac Asimov, very sad. Are you actually trading anything? Oh yes, you do have a lot of money too. Hmm. That is actually good to know. That is good to know indeed. After adjusting his glasses, Patsy scrutinizes us carefully and only then crooks a bony index finger for us to approach. Do we want to play the bet? Eh? Yes, well, or do we wish to fight him? He's got a nasty voice, high pitched and croaking at the same time. Hmm. Well, how about we place a bet? 
Logan's eyes light up. Yes, yes, so do we want to place a bet? Sure, sure. Here, you're welcome. You've got yourself a bet. The main event will begin in this very pit. The big deal. The brouhaha. An old-fashioned showdown. Patsy points at the fight schedule on the wall behind his back. Shall we make our bets? View the schedule. Make your wager. Well, let's have a look at the poster. We look up at the poster, minor league fights are listed in a 1 1 1 format, meaning three opponents meet on the field at one time. Participants of today's fight Henry the Oracle Hunter, say the large letters on the poster, Quincy, a thug from Phalanx, and Hydrangea, the name of the third fighter, is decorated with stylized flowers. So the person put some flowers there. Patsy counts the money. Well, are we ready to bet? Hiram Gear, Quincy Oracle, what a group of fighters, each one cooler than the last. Gonna bet? <clears throat> so I actually I trust the flowers. It's the 1970s anyway, right? So let's bet on Hydran Gear. Seems to be a bit more intelligent too. So we make a bet and receive a small blue ticket with the name of a fighter. We head for the arena to watch the fight. At the start of the match, Hydrangea avoids fighting entirely, egging Quincy and Hunter to attack each other. This tactic yields results. When Hunter finally lays down for a quick nap, Hydrangea leaps over to Quincy, lays him out with a quick jab to the temple. Oh! We go to Patsy with the winning ticket in hand. Yeah, nice. The bookmaker hands us a wad of notes. Yeah, nice. We it's made 50 bucks. Against novice. So, <clears throat> now the even bigger moment comes. Here he is, Keen Mason. We we who are vigorous, so yeah. Welcome back. So, I want to be champion of the pit, right? Although I don't even know how to use my knuckles on someone's chin. Patsy is so delighted; he seems about to take flight from sheer exuberance. We want to fight? It, do we? Good, wonderful. But first, we have to defeat someone. Defeat? Yes. Do we want to? Eh? Do we? We've got a guy here, Ken Mason. He's waiting for a suitable rival. Yep, sure, we fight Ken. Victory is the only road to the championship. The silver looks at us expectantly. Uh, who is Ken Mason? Logan is looking around as if trying to remember what the fighter looks like. Well, who? No, no one. He's a nobody. He came from the Barons. Nobody knows anything about him. So are we going to fight Ken, eh? What are the guy's tactics and weaknesses? Patsy muses. Nothing special, yeah, just that. Knows how to use his fist, that's all. Are we gonna we defeat him? Are we? Of course we are. Well, I wanna bet on myself. Your money disappears into the silver's pocket. Placing a bet on yourself, are we? Wonderful. Here, don't forget your ticket for when we win. We are going to win, aren't we? Okay, well, let's see. Let's proceed to the pit. Not sure about the this weapon, well, but there it is. And then maybe. Oh, uh, what? Uh, why are we over encumbered? Ah uh, well. So we save our AP. The guy is rushing for us. Okay, we are saving some more AP. Yeah, there we go. Why are we distracted? Because the guy... Distracting looks. It's hard to turn one's gaze away from such a horrific physiogno physiognomy. It's in a wrestling stance. Incredibly evasive. Oh, that's not good. And he's also very fast. Why? What? Is he a mutant or something? And he's like super strong. So that's not so good. But how about we punch him? We miss. Oh yeah. We miss. We miss. And that's it. And now he's beating us. He now he's going to beat the crap out of us, I think. Yeah, headbutt. Kicks us around. And yeah, I mean we do we can attack him oh no we can't. Hmm. 
So I think he's going to beat the crap out of us now. And this done, is it like for two seconds, huh? Let's go one back and skip the turn. Ah, yeah, so he can't attack like that. Huh? Okay, well, come on, put him down. Yeah, nice. And let's have another one. Missed. Oh, my goodness. Uh, kicking us around again. Oh, AP7, okay. Got lucky there. Come on! Oh, no. Well, it's four, so let's, let's go for two, and then we save one. Headbutt. Yeah, we need to be evasive a bit. So let's go here, like this. Skipping the turn. Ah, just to the ground again, but we are not stunned anymore. That's the good thing. So let's punch him again. <coughs> there, very good. Fortunately, no one knows what we are doing here with the with this discord with the brass knuckles. But yeah, there we go. Skipping the turn. So I think that's the right strategy. Oh God, he critted us. Okay. But now we can attack him. We just need to hit him one, once more. Come on. Yeah. Yes, we made it. We made it. Blood bets. Quest completed. Oh, we received 100 blood bets. We asked Barmaid Bethany if there was any work for us. We defeated Ken Mason. Okay, not bad. I guess not bad at all, right? We got 924. Okay, yeah, very good, I, I would argue, right? And gentlemen, my name is Patsy Logan. Let's Welcome save this one. <coughs> Crumb, what say you? Crumb and... from one foot to the other. Finally, something's happening. So, what's the plan, boss? Uh, well, we continue with the old planet. People when it's the necessary. Head cracks his knuckles and smiles gracefully. It's a great plan. I love it. All right, let's go. Yeah. Okay, well, we got beaten up pretty nastily though, but that was worth it. 924 experience points. That's actually really okay. But I think we are done for the moment. So, let's put this rifle back there. So, in this thing, did it actually use up our energy cells? Where are they? Open your eyes and you shall see 30. No, I don't think so, right? No. Oh, it's nice. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. So, we take it. Like, our beautiful brain has been, uh, has suffered a little bit though. So, what's going on here? Can we actually get in there? There's a guy there, Taylor Dunn. Well, hello there. The guard rests a hand on our chest to stop us coming any closer. This room is for fighters only, but he makes a familiar gesture with his fingers. I could let you in for a small fee. Hey, we are a fighter. He grins either sarcastically or with displeasure. Then you may enter, of course, but I wouldn't say no to a tip. Yeah, don't hold your breath, huh? Oh, if you do have some stuff. Oh, rifle bullets. Maybe we could actually make some rifles. Oh, and he has the Fistman comic book. So how... Like all of them? How much is that for 10? 10 compounds. Um, how about one beer for that? Oh, it's only 8? Hmm. Well then, how about the beer and a little bit of money, huh? Where's the money? There. Like so. And we've got black powder as well. Let's accept. Okay, so her <laughs> so rude. He looks a little bit upset. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
just for letting us through. So there is something here. Med kit, med com. A slight pleasant vibration comes from this massive apparatus. Large buttons of different colors are cool to the touch and smell of alcohol. On the manipulator's frozen in the air, there's a logo, a red letter saying Medcom. What? It costs money? No. Oh, by the way, Katajina, how about you look at our wounds? There, that's better, right? Thank you. Okay, well then. <clears throat> so there is something. Search the... Oh, no, 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 no. Katajina, you don't do that. You're not the pro looter. Oh, yeah. Psionic weapons. They don't need that one anymore, right? Uh, oh. They do have some stuff here. Yeah, you guys... Oh. And even more reagents. Okay, yeah, that's actually really good. Oh, four Energons. Okay, very nice. So, Arvidas Masiulis, he's from Greece. This short, plumpish man doesn't even turn in our direction. His thick, red-haired fingers are fishing for chips in a plastic bag. His almost completely bald pate gleams in the dull lamplight. You'll finish bandages, stimulators, and anesthetics in the locker. Take what you need and take care of yourself. I don't allow stupid questions and don't expect clever ones. Well, he's watching us with patient dislike. His badge is dirty as his lab coat, says Arvidas Maziulis, med tech. Oh. Could one purchase extra medication from such a highly educated specialist as yourself? His chip shoveling hand freezes halfway to his mouth. Uh, yeah. The only reason you guys usually come around is to shoot at each other, not kiss somebody's, I mean my ass. Okay, I'll help you out, but keep this between you and me. Always seems to see us... Oh, nice. Arvida seems to see us in a new light. He even offers a barely perceptible wink. Maybe you're alright. Now, let me make a bet. Yeah, so... And you have Bone Saw magazine. I think we could actually buy that one from you. Because we can, and I think we don't have so many of those. And the other guy had the other magazine for close combat fighting. Yeah, so how about some beef noodles? They only cost four. Yeah. Well, what could we give you? I, w I really wanna. I really wanna first have the guy, the other person for our team. Yeah. So I think we are just running back, and we make the. Yeah, we are just paying the guy money. Um. So it's forty-three. Oh, this is like such a bad system here. There. No. Ten more. Sorry. Oh! I have to do it like this? Well, there. Accept. Enjoy your noodles. How about a checkup? The medico gives us the you are an idiot look, or more precisely, the most recent and long line of idiots I'm so sick of. Look, I repeat, the medications are in the locker. The locker is over there, you've got arms and legs, use them. If the head doesn't work, you're beyond my help. Well, and what what is are you doing here, then? Covering up the corpses you leave behind, shooting and thrashing people doesn't take a lot wit. But try and write an autopsy record. A bunch of them, so they don't start asking questions in the city. Now his words are angry, Ar Arvida's voice sounds bored and tired. Most must be a common condition in his profession. Okay. Yeah. So let's get out of there. Oh, there's another container here. So let's have a look. So we were actually... Oh! Ah, uh, finally a Galenus, a simple Galenus model, surgical scalpel. That's what we wanted. Very nice indeed. That's what we wanted and we were looking for, right? Uh, 
because we have the we are going to have the scalpel stuff but uh, actually katarzyna is, uh, is also going to be good at that here the scalpel the doctor death melee weapon bladed weapon ability i think that would be a good thing the medicine with her so maybe we are not pushing our medicine just yet but what i wanted to see is also like we are going here now Ladies just quick saving my name is and if we Logan. take crumb to all the alone festival. we have some very Crump can fight as well, right? Ah, okay, only the squad leader. Yeah, there you go. So that's very sad and not very logical either because, I mean, Crump is the guy to fight, right? He's the guy. But yeah, okay. So let's just rush to the workbench. Um, I want to see. We also got some black powder there. What is the recipe for rifle cartridges? We got some bullets. And we don't have so super many rifles and now that we have the tech woman come uh, the book still active it would be a good thing i guess so rifle bullets yeah rifle cartridges so rifle card casing oh ah, yeah oh ah, yeah so five we just need five casings then we can do it okay let's run over there five casings and what run over there I said there let me have a sip of tea <coughs> so rifle casings because we we don't have so many left but I believe we have some casings right Salt rifle casings. Hmm. Why don't we have any rifle casings? Where are they? The handgun cartridges. Am I just blind? This rifle bullets. We have even more. Hmm. Oh, we don't have any casings. Oh. We can't make any ca rifle cartridges then. Or did anybody sell it? Well, okay. We'll, we'll have to check. But that, my dear fellow survivors under the dome. And we will see in the next episode. So, thanks for watching. We I think we accomplished quite something. So, we beat up a man. I mean, we hope that he's not dead, right? But... Uh, well, that was like pretty nasty and with our brains, uh, we should not do that too often because that's like, it's really bad for your brain if someone hits you on the head. Um, and uh, well, otherwise I think we are actually even through the junk town slums so we can make way next time over here. That's what we are going to do. We are going directly to this caravan, I think. Because now we have our equipment anyway. We don't need to go back to the neutral zone at this point. So we are picking up the person here. The sparrow person we heard about. And uh, and then we make the detour, I think. Or oh, we could actually make the detour like this. To the picnic because we were supposed to pick up some stuff there as well, right? Oh, well, we could actually go to the observation camp here down there. So we make a detour, uh, a tour like so. And then go back here, the cave, pillage, caravan, yeah, something like that. All right then, so, thanks for watching, guys. Look, a beautiful button to click called subscribe and another one called like. How about you click it? It shall bring you good luck. See you next time. Bye-bye.